Do you know who I am? I'm Mo Green. I made my bones when you were going out with cheerleaders. Well, hello from the Air Wagner hangar here towards the end of April. I wanted to go through and give you guys a little uh, review of the Cessna 421 Golden Eagle II, a 1976 Cessna 421. I got the hangar shut down because here in Auburn, the pilots don't have the courtesy in the run-up area to not run up their engines when I'm trying to do a video. Can you imagine that? So I thought I'd take a break from uh, you know staying at home and I uh, did my own haircut yesterday, so uh, I'm not sure how that worked out. Nancy cut the back for me. But uh, onward to the plane. So we got this nice uh, static wicks here. I'm just going to cover a lot of things in here. I uh, gave it the, you know, the Air Wagner look. I put some stickers on it. I uh, got this. Ram sent me the Ram stickers. It's a little bit bigger fuselage than the 414 I'm used to. It has the same wing lockers. I have a 34 gallon tank up here on top of the uh, left wing locker. Now on the 414A and the 421, yes, there's no tip tanks. They have a single tank on each wing. It's a wet wing and it holds 103 gallons of uh, 100 octane low lead. It's got de-ice boots. That was one of the main reasons why I wanted uh, to uh, upgrade. If my 414 would have had de-ice boots, even if they were like the uh, OO boots, not the known icing, probably would have kept it. But for me, I wanted to move up to the uh, de-ice, known de-ice, and I'll explain you know what that entails. Do not have the trailing link landing gear that started in 81 or as a option on the uh, 76 to 82 birds the engines are the uh, gtiso 520s 375 horsepower the prop is a 90 inch prop big prop and if you put your hand up against them my hands are pretty big you can barely go around the prop it's uh it's it's a lot there now ram sent me these stickers and they looked up the plane by the end number they don't give designations like ram conversion numbers four five six or seven they don't increase the horsepower they just uh, beef it up bigger magnetos and so on there's a big old intercooler scoop the hump on top is a characteristic of a geared engine Baggage area is pretty extensive. You have uh, two doors for the baggage. Can't see in there because it's dark. I carry a couple of tires. Uh, yeah, it's really dark. Yeah, there are the two tires that are showing. Let me go to this one. This one you can see a little better. I got my case there that has the Starter, battery cables, jumper cables, first aid kit, power starter, and a bug out bag also. It has a hydraulic gear, so here's where you fill it up there. There's the oxygen uh, meter there for the onboard oxygen. Much wider nose. Now what makes it a known air ice plane is see that windshield it's glass and it's heated it also has dual pitot tubes there one here and one there and then it has the wing root boots on the inner boots as well as the tail and the horizontal stabilizer that's what makes it a known ice airplane LED lights all the way around. The nacelle lights will either flash or stay steady. And like the other uh, twin Cessnas, it has a retractable landing light on the edge of the wing. 
moving around towards this side strobe light here but no rotating beacon nothing on the top nothing on the belly so just no rotating beacon those static whips wicks they have i mean they are dangerous i mark them with red tape or they have a remove before flight banner you put on there this side has no gas tank on the back the air conditioning is run off of this engine and there's the intake for the air conditioning and the service port up there both sides have wing locker of course i just keep some uh mres in here in case you you know don't have to eat your passengers if you get stranded somewhere and uh some window shades no step on the wing i'm getting you can step you just got to make sure you step on the structures where the rivets are but to clean the windows and all i'm trying to um i'm trying for the windows i'm trying to get a step ladder to use for that as far as the front windshield goes it looks good without any light on it but the front window is really crazed I might be able to show that um, a little bit. So let's move in to the inside of the plane. So I put a headset on, hopefully they'll be able to hear better. So I'll go through and uh, cover the inside of the airplane. So we have the 25 inch cabin door, which is pretty standard on uh, twin Cessnas and Golden Eagles and Chancellors. I do not have the snupper, that little shock absorber that keeps the door from slamming down. However, it is in that box right there, which uh, is going to be installed by the, uh, by the shop. So as you walk into the plane, we look towards the rear first. You got your belted potty. Now we're configured for eight. So looking up front real quick, two pilots, two, four, five is here. And then there's a, a seat that goes here, six, seven, and then the belted potty is eight. If I go all the way to the back and spin around to the front, a little glary there, but there's your potty captain's uh, the uh, boss's seat and the two up front so everybody's got uh, we got six place intercom we have the tables that you can work when you're sitting either way and it wouldn't be an air wagner plane if you didn't have snacks and all of that it's got more one extra window in the back than uh, my 414 had and let's go up front i put the hangar door down a little bit it uh helps it out a lot for the glare so as you come up to the cabin you got the quadrant of course kfc 200 autopilot yaw dampener the usual stuff here and you can see my uh, mount for my RAM mount for the iPad. I'll take that off for the sake of this. All right, so as we sit here, I'll turn the master on. Down here is all the circuit breakers, uh, controls for avionics and all the pitot heat and the lighting. And so the master is here. Turn the master on, you'll see the dash pop up and the G600 so the day after escrow closed as some of you might have seen I'm gonna speak up a little bit because I hear the fans going so as uh, some of you might have seen on an early video this right screen failed the day after escrow closed of all things and so I was lucky enough to have executive autopilots uh, put in a loaner and waited for Garmin to send a replacement out. 
they have a flat rate repair I had to pay for that but they rushed one out and I had the replacement the uh, loaner in for a few videos and now this is uh, this is mine that I have that I own so we put, we, we put that on enter now just going from left to right here so I have the Davtron clock which is super dim in the daytime I don't think it's even working you have the enunciator panel here I'm pushing it pushing the test to test to um, push the test switch here is you can't see it but there is the well, let me get a flashlight out to help you out here I'll turn the rest on in a second here you can see the radar altimeter switch on or off and it's mute here's the radar altimeter you don't get an audible which I wish I had and then this is a fuel transfer the red switch is a fuel transfer up here is the 406 ELT which gives out uh, latitude longitude position airspeed indicator that is from the micro VG system that has the calibrations on it this is my favorite here that's the pre-select knob Let's you pre-select an altitude and the plane will fly to it and level off. Radar altimeter. Garmin G600, of course. Now I'm going to turn the avionics master on here. And all the avionics will power up. So I'll put on the light lighting. Maybe that will help a bit. Here is the attitude indicator. That had tumbled. That was replaced. Uh, during the uh, annual and the pre-buy inspection. Very nice altimeter, reads out digitally, and it is also hooked to the pre-select, which is currently now 4500. So the pre-select, I thought would work off of the G600, but no, it works off of the uh, altimeter here. Up here, let me turn it on, is the uh, autopilot, uh, auto Annunciator panel where you can turn everything on and put all the buttons on and hold the altitude and uh, Flight director has flight director bars that come on and uh, I'll turn that off right now Thank you That is off. Let me make sure there's a button on the side here uh, It's off control wheel steering here haven't figured out what this button here does. It doesn't seem to do anything. A little red button there. So we got two GTN 750s. And I'm, I figured out, I think the reason why the chart wasn't showing up on the left is because the charts were being updated. And I meant to go into the menu, system, system status, and standby. Uh, let's see if anybody's looking database available on card or on card active Nothing's waiting to load so I think they all loaded up good, so we'll hold that down Going from top left to right of course the manifold pressure RPMs now the fuel flow I have the Shaden and the factory one and they don't match and I'm leaning towards the Shaden, but uh, I'm not sure. Here we have uh, speed brakes. There's the button for it. I'm gonna put the uh, camera out the window so you can see what the speed brakes do. There they are coming up, and they go down just as fast. Your pressurization controls are down here, of course. That's standard. Air conditioner. Very loud, very efficient, runs off the engine though. And underneath here is the emergency handle for the gear. It has a blowdown bottle. It's a hydraulic gear and that has a nitrogen bottle that will blow down the gear if the gear pump fails. If you have broken lines, 
forget about it. It's not coming down. Gear indicator lights, three green down, one when it's in transit here. And let's see if it goes on. So there you can see it, there you can see it going on. It uh, extinguishes, it goes out when the gear is up and locked. Got the RAM engine gauges here. Engine monitors here, these two from uh, Electronics International. Not the greatest, but they're working. Two transponders, both ADSB. One's ADSB in and out. One's just AD ADSB out. Controls for the lighting. Heater controls here. Fuel gauge. Now on the co-pilot side, you got your six pack. You got your attitude indicator, airspeed indicator, turn coordinator, altimeter, vertical speed indicator, and your DG HSI. Outside air temperature probe. This is a fire extinguisher. You can test it this way. It's fire extinguishers for the engines. AC vents are on each side here. I got my little reminder here to turn the fuel pumps off as I'm getting uh, used to flying this plane. Wet compass. Needs a compass card eventually. Uh, that's a look out the front window. You can't see it because the rays aren't hitting it right. I'm going to try to polish it out today. Uh, the usual stuff here. I just got the partitions and you got the overhead vents. The uh, O2 there's your armrest with the O2 in there for emergencies. I got the mask sitting behind. And then uh, when you look backwards, there's a look into the cabin. So I turn the fans and all, it gets a little quieter. So that's basically the uh, review of the plane inside and out. Glad to have you ride along on all my flights. I'm having a lot of fun making the videos. And you know, these are RAM engines, and so the RAM power settings are here on the card. There's one side and then the other that shows the different power settings based upon what percentage and what your uh, settings are and all of that. So hope that gave you a little more insight on the Golden Eagle 2, and uh, look forward to having you ride along. And that's how she wrote.